Hello and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the selling process. And now the selling process is divided into seven segments. It starts with the preparation, the opening, the need and problem identification, presentation and demonstration, dealing with objections, closing the sale and the follow-up. Preparation. Be sure to know the industry, that is important. Show your competence as an insurance agent. Demonstrate your skills and knowledge in the industry to let them know that you know what you're doing and what your role is as an insurance agent. An important thing is the problem and recognition of the needs of the customer. Sell yourself effectively. Show them your sales pits. In 60 seconds, tell them your best selling points. Impress them. It's like they are your clients and you have to persuade them in getting the insurance policy or service that you offer. Prepare for tough questions. These questions will let the interviewer know how capable, effective and efficient you are in bringing the sales to them. Sometimes these questions are tricky. Having the right confidence at your tables would help you get through this. Show them your flexibility as an insurance agent. Insurance products vary depending on the needs of clients, characteristics, quantity determination and specification development. Insurance companies tend to change or update their insurance policies or products so make sure that you show them your flexibility to learn new things and develop continuously. If you're going to sell insurance, you need to communicate the benefit of it and the need for it. The opening. It is important for salespeople in the field of insurance to consider how to create a favorable initial impressions with customers, as this can often affect later perceptions. Good first impressions can be gained by adopting a business-like approach, being friendly but not overly friendly, being attentive to detail, observing common courtesies like waiting to be asked to sit down, and by showing the customer appreciation for having taken the time to see you. Smile, be nice and communicate. Need and Problem Identification Consumers will buy a product because they have a problem that gives a rise to a need. Therefore, the first task is to identify the needs and or problems of each customer. Only by doing this can a salesperson connect with each customer's situation. Effective need and problem identification requires the development of questioning and listening skills. The hallmark mistake of inexperienced salespeople is that they do all the talking. Successful salespeople know how to get the customers to do most of the talking. Presentation and demonstration. It is the presentation and demonstration that offers the opportunity for the salesperson to convince customers that they can supply the solution to their problem or satisfy their need. It should focus on customer benefits rather than product features. The salesperson should continue to ask questions during the presentation to ensure that the customer has understood what he or she has said. Dealing with objections. Salespeople rarely close a sale without first having to overcome customer objections. Objections should not be regarded as a negative since they highlight issues that are important to the buyer. The secret of dealing with objections is to handle both the substantive and emotional aspects. The substantive part is to do with the objection itself. For example, if a customer objects to the product's price, the salesperson needs to use convincing arguments that show that the price is indeed not too high. This can be tricky business since people resent being proven wrong and therefore the salesperson needs to recognize the emotional aspect of objection handling. 
In order not to let the customer lose face, it is important to listen to the objections without interruption and use the agree and counter technique, where you agree with the buyer but then put forward an alternative point of view. Closing the sale. An inexperienced salesperson might think that an effective presentation followed by convincing handling of objections will guarantee that the buyer will ask for the product without having to close the sale. This rarely happens and usually it's necessary for the salesperson to take the initiative because the buyers often still have doubts in their mind. Closing techniques include simply asking for the product, summarizing key points and asking for the order or offering a special deal to close the sale. So to wrap things up, it is important to follow up on the sale and the salesperson has to check that there are no problems with the delivery and the installations of the products and fix them if there are any. The follow-up will show that the salesperson really does care about the customer and he wants to forge a strong business relationship. Now, Thank you for listening and I hope that you have enjoyed this lecture.